And hello again, students. Uh, this time I'm in uh, Evan's third edition. It's uh, chapter four, problem nine. Okay. And uh, traditionally, before I started using the actual Pearson My Lab for this, I uh, just want to remind you that the files, let's start with this the questions at the end of the chapter relate to the questions that you see in Pearson that I assigned. And there's really kind of two different ways to do this to uh, get the answers because uh, the Pearson basically asks you to push uh, the solutions or push the answers back into uh, the Pearson My Lab system after you've run what we're going to do here. Okay. Uh, and previous to the Pearson system, and something that still remains is that there's a set of uh, the data files here for all these questions at the end of the chapter. So you can see I, on the online book, I went to the end end of the uh, chapter questions and I picked out a screen grab of uh, problem nine which is just about the same question uh, that you're posed that's posed to you in Pearson okay so the only difference is, is then the back of the, the problems when they're listed in the back of the chapter refer you to the actual file you would have to open up so there's a whole set of files that I have on eClass for this all right that they give me and hence I give you uh, and it's called car sharing survey so that's why this question has a little bit more information in it than when you go to Pearson okay all right but I did go to Pearson and I downloaded into the Excel file here for problem nine it actually downloaded it okay and and so if you had looked at the other way to look at it if you had gone on eClass and found the file it would have been car sharing survey okay all right, so what it wanted us to do was a histogram for these two columns here. I'm going to double click, I'm going to just double click the edge here to make them big enough to fit the text. It auto formats it so that the uh, width of the column will fit the text in there. And it wanted us to do histograms on this. So how, how do we do histograms? Uh, we're going to go over to the, the data menu item up here. And when you do that, you should have the data analysis uh, ribbon section already loaded okay because that's not that doesn't normally get loaded in Excel we've gone through that before that you have to go through the file options and uh, allow the data analytics or add data analytics in there okay so we've already done that so if you're not seeing it there you have to go in there and do that you have to go through the file options and uh, look at the add-ins and, and add in the data analysis okay I'm gonna give a quick peek here before we get going you click on this and within all these things we can do with the data analysis ribbon area is uh, the histogram. Okay, so when you double click on the histogram, what it wants as an input range, okay, it wants to take some data and we need to set up a little mini table. Okay, so we have to do some work on this. We have to create another little section below this that describes the bin range. Okay, and in this problem, you'll notice that they say do not group the data into bins. Okay. All that means, it's a little bit ambiguous, and that's why I'm doing this video. Uh, sometimes these questions, uh, you have, if you read the book, it's actually very aligned with the questions from the book. The book, If you just follow how the book does things, this should make sense, okay? Uh, and what, So what we have to do is, well, we'll give it the raw data is in this, this area here. And what we need to do is set up another little mini table for ourselves that describes the data in whatever we're doing the histogram from okay so we're gonna have to produce another little uh thing down here we're not ready to do that because we don't have it built yet okay but i just want to show you that we have to build a little bin table that's going to tell it what the bins are okay all it's saying up here is do not group keep this in mind do not group the data into bins we still need bins it says just don't group the data i'll explain that in a second and then finally your output options uh, we could tell it anywhere on our sheet here by telling it a an output range uh, you could actually do a new worksheet or even a new work workbook, but I just keep everything on the same page for this problem. It's not that complicated, all right? So I have to close this because we need to create the bin range before we can, there's nothing there to, to, to tell it to do anything yet, all right? So, uh, okay. Let me get out of that for a second. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, we're going to take weekly usage, and what we want to do is what are all the unique values in weekly usage so if we go in here and do a quick sp spot check on it we have a zero here we have a one two three five and seven those are very unique it's a very short list of actual outcomes okay so we're going to just type them in we're going to type in zero one 
There was a two. There was a three. There was no four. So the next one's, whoops, the next one's five and seven. I think we got everything we need in there. So weekly usage, this has to be accurate to this. It'll blow up your histogram if it doesn't, if this table doesn't contain uh, all, the, all the values here. All right. So under weekly usage, I'm just going to drive a little yellow into that so our eye catches it. All right. So we've created our bin uh, table here. And what we've done in this case is we've just explicitly listed every entry that you can get, every outcome that can happen. So now we're, we're ready to do the weekly usage. We come back over here to the data menu item. We click data analytics analysis, uh, click on uh, the histogram. And so we have to feed the right data in here. So uh, what we're going to do is you have to make this uh, box active and then select your data. Okay, and notice that we have headers. We actually have labels or headers on the data. Okay, and I've clicked, yes, our data does have labels. All right, so if you do the label up here, you have to do a label down here. There's a little few little restrictions here. Okay, so to put in the bin range, I just uh, get that box active, and I just copy that in there like that. All I do is select it. You don't have to copy it, right? So labels is selected, and let's tell it where we want to put it. Okay, so where should we put this one? Let's put it. Uh, let's say right here. Okay, that's where it's going to drop it in. All we do is hit OK, and uh, we we get the actual histogram table. It tells us for each of the values down here. Notice it's for every value down here. It gives us how many times that occurred. Okay, and uh, it produces the histogram chart. Okay, now I have that selected. Uh, when I do the second one, I'll show you that I had it selected to actually drop the chart in there. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that, put that up here, make it a little bit nicer looking like that. Okay, so it creates this table automatically. We had to have the original data. We had to set up a bin guidance. We had to, we had to guide, uh, we had to guide the um, Excel into uh, setting up the bins correctly. All right, notice that it produced something called more, okay? Uh, that's sort of a catch-all. That would be anything larger than seven. It's sort of an error check or sort of a backstop to the process of running through the data here. And it tells us that uh, we basically collected everything into one of the bins here and nothing got uh, overran our last uh, bin level. You know, like what number here, the seven, we had nothing greater than seven. It's just telling us that. It's sort of a catch-all for Excel, the way that it does this thing. Okay, so we got that. So now we're going to do it again. Okay, so this time we want to do waiting time, right? So we go back to the, well, before we do that, we need to create our little mini table down here. So we're going to do, I'm really lazy, so I'm just going to do control C, and I'm going to drop that in here, control V, all right? And then we look at how many unique values. This is a really simple table, right? So we can actually eyeball it and just see what the differences are. Okay, so we have, uh, what, we have those zeros, we have a five, we have a 10, and we have a 15 there, we have a 20, okay? So we have no zero, but we have five, 10, 15, 20 are uh, the unique values in there, okay? So we're just doing a completely different histogram now, all right? So with that, then we can go to data analysis, double click the histogram, okay? So now we have to reset all these things. I, gra whoop, I grab these up here, and remember we have to have labels on it because we told it has labels. Then we have to give it our little bin range that we produce for it there. Uh, the output range, where should we put that? Uh, let's grab that. You have to activate the box. I remind you to do that. And I'll put it right here. Actually, I'll just move it down one. I'm going to put it right there. And what, what I mentioned was is if I have chart output selected, technically a histogram is a graph or a visual is the picture. So the histogram itself is the picture. So that's what we're actually producing. That's the chart output when we talk about histograms, okay? So now pretty much we have all this set up, and I can just hit OK, and it drops the new one in there, okay? So it should look pretty good. Okay, beautiful, right? Now we have some pretty simple data here, and I just want to show you what they meant by this, is, is what you can do is you can create bins. Here we have so few unique numbers that we just made an explicit table, and it listed every single one of them in here. What we're talking about, I'm going to run it the other way. When it says do not group the data 
into bins. Let's let's look at how we would do that, what that means, okay? So it might be that you have a dollar figure in here, uh, you know, some kind of amount of payments from zero to $100,000 or something like that. And it might be a really long uh, list of data. It might be 600 cells long or 600 rows long, something like that. So it, might, it could be quite a bit more complex and it's more of what you would continue consider continuous data like uh, it would be to the nearest dollar so you get any value between zero to a hundred thousand obviously we're not going to list every single number from zero to a hundred thousand it's ridiculous you know so in other words you know your histogram would have zero here one here if, if it's to the nearest dollar it, it would have all the way out to a hundred thousand okay so that's where we can start understanding what this little table does for us is we're actually setting the an upper limit. I'm going to show you what the real consideration for this is. Uh, we're setting the, uh, we're done by the way. I should have mentioned that we are done at this point, okay, with the question. And I'm just showing you how to massage this uh, data here to show how to manipulate it using the data analysis histogram and how you set up bins. So we basically have a bin for every single unique number here. Now I'm going to show you how you do a span, okay. So we're going to type something in here, and we're going to say the upper limit. First, we're going to type in and say upper limit. It's still the weekly usage, but it's a reminder to us. This is what the book tells us to do, okay? It tells us to put in there the upper limit to the bin, okay? And then I'm going to copy the data down here, which we'll see, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to create these bins now, and I'm going to say uh, the first bin goes... The upper limit is uh, is one, so anything with zero and one is going to be counted in the bin. Okay, so what we're going to actually do is I'm going to get rid of that zero. So I'm going to do the little trick here. I'm going to move this up. So everything that's zero and one is going to get caught in that first bin. Okay, and then let's get rid of this control X. And this, then likewise, everything two and three will be in the second bin. Okay, and let's do this one more time so we're only going to have three bins now so we really we were setting up the bins when we only have very few unique numbers we can set them out explicitly here we're doing ranges okay anything up to and including one is going to be counted into bin one everything from there uh from two and three up above you know 1.00 up to 3.00 uh, will be in bin two and then uh, anything above 3.0 to 7.00 will be in, in three bins. So we reduce the number of bins, see? We're gonna count more things in each bin. So we're gonna run that again, okay? And this, let's do this as, let's do this here. This is column D, all right? Now, so we're gonna change where our bin, bin range is, is uh, specified. We're gonna say here, okay? And where shall we put it? Let's put it, don't forget, you have to put your cursor in there and activate it. Other things, otherwise things go kind of whack, wacky there. So uh, so we only have three bins. I just reduced, it's the same data, but it's now just uh, fewer, fewer bins. We're collecting things into fewer bins. And I say, okay, all right. And there you go. And notice now, control Z, now, um, now we only have three bins, okay? Now, if you read the chapter in future, uh, the further questions aside for homework, we'll get into how you split up and uh, the bins a little bit differently like, like we did here, okay? So it gets more into that. I just want to explain, again, what this meant by saying do not group the data into bins. We were just explicitly listing every single value. That's the way this problem is set up. The data works well that way, okay? And hopefully that helps, and leave comments, let me know if it works, and we'll talk to you in class. Bye now.